Hello ladies and gentlemen, we are back for a brand new marathon. We looked at Sly Cooper and Jack and Daxter, so of course the obvious next step would be to look at Ratchet and Clank, the last of these franchises to come out, and the last that I played, and it's also my least favorite. Yes, let's get this out of the way right now, because it's no secret that I'm much more enthusiastic about Jack and Daxter, and especially Sly Cooper, than I am about Ratchet and Clank. However, I will not let that bias get in the way of these reviews, which are strictly about the beginnings of the Ratchet and Clank franchise. So for this marathon, we'll be looking at Ratchet & Clank, Ratchet & Clank 2 Going Commando, Ratchet & Clank 3 Up Your Arsenal, Ratchet Deadlocked, and Ratchet & Clank Size Matters. And since it's topical and I don't want to wait god knows how long until I get around to review the games that came out prior to it, Ratchet & Clank on PS4 will be covered in this video. Just as a side note, I don't own working physical copies of Ratchet & Clank 1 and 3 anymore. So some poor HD collection elements aside, like I said in my Sly 3 review, I don't know what the big deal is with the Ratchet & Clank collection, honestly. I think it beats the Sly collection by a mile, to be honest. So even though I have a working copy of Ratchet 2, I will be looking at these games on the Ratchet & Clank HD collection, and deadlocked via its PSN edition. And unfortunately for size matters, we are stuck with the PS2 version. So enough beating around the bush, how did Ratchet & Clank come to be? Well, if you've seen my review of Jack & Daxter The Precursor Legacy, I can tell you it's more or less the exact same story, only replace Crash Bandicoot, Naughty Dog, and Jack and & Daxter with Spyro the Dragon, Insomniac Games, and Ratchet & Clank, to the point where both games are off the same game engine. But if you didn't, I'll sum it up by saying Insomniac Games started their company with CEO Ted Price with games like the Doom clone FPS Disruptor, but they caught the attention of Universal and so they worked with them and Sony to make Spyro the Dragon on PS1. And I'll be honest, I've never played any of these games other than the demos in the Crash games. Not that I never will, but for now I haven't and have no immediate interest in doing so. Anyway, the profit of these games was being split among Insomniac, Universal, and Sony, and they wanted to cut out the middleman and make more money by working directly with Sony to make more games. However, this meant letting go of Spyro to make something new. That, and they ran out of ideas for Spyro to begin with since he doesn't have any hands, so they put in a bunch of extra characters. When starting on the PS2, they were originally going to make a game set in the Mayan era about a girl with a staff. However, the game wasn't doing it for them, so they decided to scrap it and venture into outer space with the new IP, Ratchet and Clank. And as for my personal experience with the series, I might be the only person to say this, but it's actually Justice League, the animated series that got me into Ratchet and Clank. I was at Target going to buy Justice League Season 2, which I actually still have to this very day, and I I saw Ratchet and Clank 2 going commando on the shelves, so I had to buy it because I was just very intrigued by its world and art style. And so here we are 10 years later reviewing the games. In regards to the development of the PS4 game, it can be summed up as Insomniac Games by this time was a bigger name in the gaming world than they were back in 2002. At this time they had more games under their belts such as the Resistance series and Overstrike, later given a darker makeover and called Fuse. Ratchet and Clank was still going at this point as well. In early 2013, a Ratchet and Clank movie was announced, released in 2016 to negative reviews. I saw that coming a mile away to be honest. But anyways, this video is not about the movie, it is about the original Ratchet and & Clank and the movie tie-in game released for the PlayStation 4. Taking the movie out of the equation, I'll say that starting the series over was a great idea on paper. By this point, the original continuity was starting to get pretty muddled and confusing. Considering that much of the PS4 install base has never played a Ratchet & Clank game before, rebooting the franchise was a great way to appeal to those newcomers as well as longtime fans. Originally, I had planned to get this marathon up before the movie came out, but Clearly that just didn't happen, so I'd say this intro's gone on for too long, so let's talk about Ratchet and Clank. Story-wise, Ratchet and Clank begins on a planet known as Velden, where we meet Ratchet, a Lombax, which is a cat-like alien who is trying to build a ship to explore the galaxy, however, he's missing the robotic ignition system. In other words, without a robot, Ratchet can't leave Velden. Meanwhile, at a robot factory on a distant planet, Warbots are being manufactured, but a defect comes in named XJ0461 and sees a video showing the evil plan of Chairman Drek, who in the PS4 game is named Alonzo. The defect is chased from the facility in the PS4 game, this is a gameplay sequence. The robot takes a ship which is shot down on Velden, to which Ratchet witnesses the crash and retrieves the robot. The robot wakes up and alerts Ratchet that Chairman Drek is taking pieces of planets which destroys the planet that they took the piece from, so that he can build a new planet since his own one is now polluted and unlivable. The robot wants Ratchet to help him find a superhero known as Captain Quark in exchange for the robotic ignition system, and Ratchet gives the robot the name Clank. So from this point on, not much happens other than Ratchet and Clank searching for Quark, because similar to Jack 2, Ratchet and Clank is a game where the story is mostly about meeting characters, and I find it pretty engaging to see Ratchet and Clank interact with the different inhabitants of each planet, meeting their memorable side characters like Helga or Big Al or Skid McMarks, and the plumber who appears in about every Ratchet & Clank game. But if you want to avoid spoilers, skip to this point in the video to avoid being spoiled for the PlayStation 2 version of Ratchet & Clank. 
Ratchet and Clank catch up to Captain Quark, who tells Ratchet and Clank how they can become true heroes with his training at his HQ. However, this HQ is a complete hellhole that no creature could possibly live through, but somehow they manage to do it. With Captain Quark encouraging them to step on the circle on the platform, Ratchet is weary, but Clank pressures him into doing it, but Captain Quark betrays them, sending them both into a pit with a monster about to kill them both. Captain Quark reveals that he's the spokesperson for Drek's new planet, and that he's not really a hero. Ratchet and Clank beat the monster, but Ratchet is pissed at Clank for falling for Quark's trap and is ready to take on Quark. But Clank still wants to defeat Drek, so the two butt heads is the the adventure goes on, and again, the story is mostly driven by the characters you meet and the places you visit, so there isn't much to say until Ratchet and Clank finally make up and take on Quark and defeat him. Ratchet and Clank witness Drek tear a city to pieces, and the two realize how bad the situation with Drek truly is, and team up once and for all to defeat Drek since his next target is Ratchet's home planet of Veldin. So they go to defeat Drek and discover that Drek was the person who poisoned his planet to begin with for cash to make a new one, and he will continue to repeat the process till the end of time, with Ratchet and Clank rushing to finish him off, to which they do, and defeat Drek and his laser cannon is now positioned at his new planet. Ratchet and Clank then use the laser cannon to destroy the new planet with Clank breaking his arm in the process. With one heartwarming ending, the game concludes. We, uh, still need to fix that arm. And that's the story of Ratchet and Clank, and again, the story itself isn't particularly complicated, but the solid writing and character interactions make it very enjoyable for me. And I used to hate the fight between Ratchet and Clank, but now after playing the PS4 game, I really like the character development for the two, making them seem more like legit friends than just having them just be friends, which is one thing I think this game definitely has over the Precursor Legacy. Captain Quark, despite being a selfish villain, he's just such a likable character, you just can't help but love him, with Jim Ward turning an unforgettable performance. And even though most of the other people you meet are only for one scene, it's hard to forget Helga or Skid McMarks. Anyway, if you want to avoid spoilers, for the PS4 game, skip to this point of the video to get past spoilers. Since the game only came out a few weeks ago, I'm not going to say anything that gives the plot away for anyone who's interested. The game begins with Captain Quark in prison telling a prisoner about his side of the story, and it begins on Veldon again, only difference being that in this game, Ratchet is trying out for the Galactic Rangers, consisting of two generic characters and Captain Quark, who rejects Ratchet despite doing flawlessly on the tryouts, until on a distant planet, Chairman Alonzo Drek and Dr. Nefarious are building warbots to use the Deplanetizer to build Drek's new planet, until a defect shows up and escapes, crash landing on Veldon, meeting Ratchet and the two quickly hit it off, and I really fucking mean that, since the second they meet, they're best friends, calling each other pal and all that shit. Anyway, Ratchet and Clank go to Metropolis to tell the Galactic Rangers of Drex and Nefarious' plan, but they're under attack from Drex's forces, and Ratchet and Clank save the day and join the Galactic Rangers, reluctantly on Quark's side, I might add. And so from there, there's a lot of the same things that happen, only with no real interesting characters. I mean, the Galactic Rangers are completely uninteresting and add nothing to the original story that wasn't there before. And everyone else you meet are just wooden NPCs, and I'd say the townspeople of Precursor Legacy were more interesting. Like, I hate the parts where the Galactic Rangers join you and or say dumb shit like, You wanna take this one? and don't do anything. Until again, Captain Quark betrays the team, but one big difference is that Quark isn't actually a villain this time around, while helping Drek to kill Ratchet out of jealousy for his heroics is kind of evil, but I mean, the first two Ratchet games, Quark was a legit villain who didn't slightly care about being a hero and wanted nothing but fame. Here, he's a bit more likable, but just as fun. Anyway, Nivalis is destroyed by the Deplanetizer, but don't worry, kids, every single person got evacuated, which is fucking lame. I mean, when the Empire blew up Alderaan in A New Hope, people died. But if there isn't a single casualty, then who cares? Later in the story, Dr. Nefarious turns Drek into a sheep and throws him into outer space. So let's talk about this. In the original, Drek was a serious and really good antagonist, and in the PS4 game, I honestly have no idea what he's doing and what I'm supposed to take away from it all. In the original, he was voiced by Kevin Michael Richardson, and now he's voiced by Paul Giamatti, aka the fucking Rhino in The Amazing Spider-Man 2. So yeah, Drek sucks, and he's only here to be pushed aside for Nefarious to be our main villain. And while I like the character, but altogether, I just don't feel as if his inclusion in this game was all that necessary. Anyway, Ratchet and Clank meet up with Quark and defeat Dr. Nefarious, ending with Quark, Ratchet and Clank going off to fight an escaping prisoner, thus ending the game. The story was kind of lame in my opinion. The characters you meet and places you visited, like I said earlier, was the driving force behind the original story, but the PS4 game, lacking that, makes it more generic in my opinion. Ratchet is just a typical wide-eyed hero, and quite literally Clank does nothing, and the Galactic Rangers are just there not doing anything. I'm going to assume this has something to do with the fact that this is a movie-based game, and so the game has to stick with the movie for most of the plot, which is why most of the planets don't have a lot of cutscenes. Other than these extremely poor in-game cutscenes, that is. Where I don't consider that much of an excuse, it's still a lame story. Biggest example being how when Ratchet and Clank make up and become true friends at the end of the original, you feel something. But here, I just don't feel anything. 
I feel like this game, despite being a reboot, still follows the status quo of the recent hey. games in the series, which is probably why they don't spend much time developing Ratchet's relationship with Clank, which in my opinion kills the point of a reboot. Maybe Ratchet was a bit more unlikable in the old game, but I feel he was more interesting. Mikey Kelly as Ratchet wasn't the best, and I do prefer James Arnold Taylor as the character, but all around, the voice acting in both is still good, except the female Galactic Ranger, of course. So I guess it's time to move on to the gameplay. Ratchet and Clank is a standard platformer at its surface. You can run, jump, double jump, and use a wrench to attack enemies and operate bulk cranks, which serve to break up the pace since it's the exact same solution every single time. I said that Precursor Legacy had some awkward platforming control, but honestly, I don't think that quite compares to how it is in Ratchet and Clank. Ratchet's double jump kills all momentum, and Ratchet does not have a spin kick to extend his jumps. So we're stuck with this, and yes, you can get used to it, but I figured I'd mention the issue nonetheless. Control-wise, the PS4 game controls like a dream, and I could play it all day, with so many moves that you could pull off that the original game couldn't even dream of. Ratchet can obtain several gadgets and weapons to help him out along the way, those being the swing shot, a grapple gun to swing around. The helipack is an upgrade for Clank, allowing Ratchet to glide and do a high jump. The hydro displacer allowing Ratchet to drain water in a room and refill it. The grind boots allow Ratchet to grind along rails, which I find pretty enjoyable since all it really is is dodging obstacles, and I find it an enjoyable break from the main gameplay, and this goes for both versions. The pilot's helmet allows Ratchet to fly in a fighter jet, and after playing the Lost Frontier, I'm glad to play fast-paced plane sections. I wish you could slow down to get more shots in, but this works quite well in the three sections you play with this gameplay. I also enjoy it in the PS4 game where you can tether enemies to your ship and throw them at obstacles, but I do hate how to take out targets you have to destroy a certain amount of enemies first. It can get kind of annoying. The Magna Boots allow Ratchet to magnetize himself to metallic surfaces, and I really don't like this since Ratchet can't jump and controls like ass. Luckily those sequels, including the PS4 game, fix this issue. The Metal Detector picks up bolts, our form of currency, but the PS4 game removes this ability. The Thruster Pack is an upgraded Hella Pack, good for pressing switches, and once you get it, the odds of you switching to the helipack are very low. The O2 mask allows Ratchet to breathe underwater and on plants no oxygen. The hydro pack allows Ratchet to swim faster, and the hollow guys allows Ratchet excruciatingly, tediously, walk in this dumb robot disguise getting guards to open doors for me. Or you could just use it for a few seconds and blow everyone away, and the PS4 gamer disguised as Quark instead. One of my favorites is the PDA. The Gadgetron PDA. Public display of affection? No, 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 personal delivery assistant. Allowing you to get ammo anytime and any place, only for a higher cost. But my least favorite is the trespasser, where you have to solve a puzzle in which you have to line up beams into the proper places. And while it starts out pretty simple, it gets pretty annoying later with so many beams on the screen that I spend a lot of time on these sections. In the PS4 game, there are more features like shutting off power, but the good news is that all the mandatory trespasser sections are skippable. Our heroes are learning an important lesson. Always take the easy path to victory. Clank sections are also part of the experience, and in the original, while there are only two sections of this, I still don't really care for it since Clank's controls are very stiff and his speed is lower than Silver the Hedgehog. Clank controls tiny robots called Gadgetbots to do things for him, but my biggest issue is that if one of them is damaged, you have to walk all the way back to where you found him to get the bot that respawned. It's very annoying and makes me really like the character a lot less, because I know this shit is coming. The PS4 game makes Clank control much smoother and the gameplay is more puzzle based, and I'll say a few of these got me quite confused and took me several minutes to figure out. Ratchet and Clank also has mini games in the form of the gun turn, which work exactly how you think it does, and the hoverboard races, which in the original was decent enough, but I feel as if it could have been a bit more interesting. Personally, I like races to be more fast paced and intense, however this one kinda lacks in that regard. I mean, you're not even given a boost until the second race. The PS4 game improves these quite a bit by giving the boost right away and overall making the races more intense. So basically the main point of Ratchet & Clank is to blow things up with a wide variety of weapons, and I'll say this now, the weapon selection in the original Ratchet & Clank is nowhere near as crazy and explosive as it gets in later games. We've got a blaster, a rocket launcher, and a bomb glove. Ratchet's main form of defense is his wrench, which you can do a three hit combo with. I don't use it that much, but it is nice for big clusters of small enemies. There are more creative weapons like the vacuum gun, sucking up small enemies in crates allowing you to fire them back at the enemies. Other ones just suck, like the Visibomb gun, which controls like ass and is completely not useful. But I consider the blaster, the pyroster, and the negotiator to be enough to get through the game. But let's talk about bolts. Bolts drop from defeated enemies and are stored in crates. Bolts are used for progression and buying weapons, so to get all of these weapons you need to pay for them. Which sure, you can grind for them I guess, but I've got one major issue here. That would be the fucking paywalls. What do I mean? Well basically it's when a character says you can't pass until you pay me bolts, and usually on your first playthrough you won't have enough. I sure as hell didn't, and you gotta go looking for every single one. So you'll barely have enough money for weapons, which sucks since later in the game, certain weapons are good against certain enemies, so you'd have to buy weapons and buy a progression at the same time. Like in Mega Man, you get powers by beating bosses, and so the game knows by the end what weapons you have and don't have and can force you to use them. Point being that most of your money is wasted on paywalls that's overall a stupid mechanic. My proof is that the PS4 game entirely takes out paywalls. 
Bolts are also very hard to get in mass quantities. I mean, you'll get bolts very frequently, but getting the amount you need takes such a long time if you want to buy something. Also, why do you have to pay for every single bullet and not a full ammo restore? The PS4 game improves this quite a bit by throwing bolts down your throat by doing anything, including side quests, hoverboard races, and even main quest missions. Another addition is that each bolt is worth more. The game also reduces what you can buy, so by the end of the game you'll have a hell of a lot of bolts. The game is pretty fucking hard, by the way, and problematically the game isn't difficult because the developers wanted to make it a really hard game. But no, this is one of those games is difficult because of dated game design. For all those things I've said already about weapons and bolt management and the platforming, all that would be made better if the combat was better. Ratchet has no strafing, while it didn't bother me in the Jack game since the auto aim would work well enough, except for the Lost Frontier. But here you really need it. I honestly can't understand why this is. I mean, like in Mega Man Legends that came out in 1997 before Ocarina of Time, if you just change the controls in the menu, you strafe left with L1 and right with R1. But when Ocarina of Time came out in 1998, it changed the face of controlling action games in 3D. Most games, including Mega Man Legends 2, had adapted to this, and Ratchet and Clank, a game that came out in 2002 after Majora's Mask and before Wind Waker, can't do this? Health is also a big issue since we have 4 hit points and after that you're dead. And you can upgrade to 8 for 40,000 bolts. And I think the issue with that speaks for itself. But other than that, I think I'm done talking about the original game's core gameplay. The PS4 game takes what was introduced in Ratchet & Clank 2, improved in 3, and expanded upon the future trilogy. You can upgrade your weapons with experience, same with health, and you can mod your weapons with rare retainium, making the PS4 game a perfect gameplay experience. The best example being on poor Guitaro when you ride a boat. In the original, my palms are sweating due to the unforgivable checkpoints and irritating enemies. In the PS4 game, I can beat this without even trying. Weapons are essentially the best ones in the series along with new creative ones like the Proton Drum. And I can say the humor in this game pisses me off because in the dialogue it tries way too hard, but in gameplay how can any of you say you still find Mr. Zircon funny? I mean, the jokes are the same as they always been, and I wish they would stop bringing it back. I was going to say that about the Groovatron, and yes, it really has run its course, but it'll save your ass. Be sure to get it as soon as possible. You can also get a jetpack. We can barely use it in the game, whereas the fucking Rangers can use it unlimitedly, so that sucks. But other than that, the gameplay is quite solid. Definitely the best Ratchet and Clank game since the crack in time in 2009. Other things you can do in the game is getting skill points for bonuses after the game is finished. These were in the Spyro series as well, and they are basically trophies before trophies, but I don't spend much time trying to get these, so I can't really talk about them all that much. The last thing I'm going to talk about is the Rhino. What's a Rhino, anyway? Rip ya a new one. What did you just say to me? R-Y-N-O. Rip ya a new one. Oh, this thing costs a whopping 150,000 bolts. Since after the game is done, you can play it again in New Game Plus to get more bolts, which means that you'll still have to pay for progression and ammo. So that would mean that if you were to play through this game to get the Rhino legitimately, you would have to, let's see, add up all the paywalls, necessary weapons, ammo of course, carry the pie, four playthroughs. So fuck that, on Realgar, the PS2 version you can use the Hollow Guys talk to this lady to glitch onto the racetrack and use the taunter to get infinitely responding bolts. And the PS3 edition is a bit more complicated. You have to use a decoy glove, stand next to this wall, shoot them on the ground as close to you as you can, and glitch through the wall, and glide down to the track and do the same thing. And you'd have to hold down the button for hours, but screw that. Several hours later, I got the Rhino and consider this the only thing making the final boss playable, unless you have the PDA, of course. In the PS4 game, getting the Rhino is similar to how it has been since Tools of Destruction. Basically, in the game, you can collect Hollow cards and collect the nine Rhino cards, and the Rhino is yours. However, my only issue is that you can't get it until the final boss, and in extreme mode, you have to get it with a whopping one million bolts. Fuck that. The next thing to bring up would be the gold bolts, collectibles you can find in the stages that you can use in New Game Plus to get enhanced versions of the weapons giving them new features, like the blaster ricocheting off the wall. But you have to use gold bolts and bolts to buy them, so fuck that. Bosses are pretty bland, honestly. Most of them are very repetitive and drawn out, especially in the PS4 game where your weapons don't do much damage. The soundtrack creates an engaging atmosphere that really makes the game feel distinguished from other games. It's not all that great, but it feels like it belongs in a Ratchet game, if that makes any sense. <laughs>
PS4 game, honestly, I couldn't even tell you this game has music. It's so generic and bland. Graphically, the original looks pretty good. I don't have much to say about it in that regard. I think the original Sly and Jack games look better, to be honest. But this game gets the job done. The PS4 game is really impressive in that regard. The lighting and shadows are amazing, but I still don't think it's the greatest looking game of all time or anything. I mean, it's very glaring to me how Ratchet's model has no reaction to the bright Gadgetron vendor next to you, or how rain is dropping on the ground and Ratchet's body isn't reacting to this at all. I mean, in Batman Arkham Knight, the game does just that and looks great. In Metal Gear Solid 5, Ground Zeroes is the same way. And while my footage isn't that great since it was recorded with the PS3 version with Component and not the PS4 version with HDMI, it's still the same principle. Ratchet and Clank is still gorgeous, but I think with more development time, the game could have looked better. The game also has graphical glitches, like this part. Or general glitches like this. And of course, this part. Come on, soldier. Let's move into battle. Overall, Ratchet and Clank on the PS2 is still a good game. I think it hasn't aged that well, but the game has a memorable world and story. The gameplay is dated, but I still enjoy the game quite a bit. The PS4 game is a perfect gameplay experience, but where the rest of the game is very lacking. I'll be honest, even though the PS4 game is an improvement in the gameplay department than the PS2 original, I think the PS2 version has more heart and soul, making it the better game in my opinion. What do I mean by this? Is that the original built the universe and tried its hardest to get you into what it had to offer. There were bumps in the road, but it tried, and I appreciate that quite a bit. Not to say the PS4 game isn't trying, but the world building was significantly decreased from the original. So while the movie was received horribly, the game was getting praised left and right. So I'd love to see the next four games given the treatment the original got, only expand upon what the PS4 game did right and wrong. Maybe more playthroughs will change my opinion, but after two playthroughs, I'd say I played enough of the PS4 version. And the same goes for the original, I'm not gonna play this game very often either. But trust me guys, the marathon is only just beginning, because next up is Ratchet & Clank 2, Going Commando, for the PlayStation 2.